Hey everybody, CW here, Card Wolf, because I'm always on the hunt for great cards. And today I have a treat for you. We're going to do a couple of rips here of some packs that I hope will yield us rookie cards of the uh, two brand new Baseball Hall of Famers. Fred McGriff, his, uh, his rookie card can be found in 1986 Donruss, and I got a pack of that from the uh, card closet. And then uh, Scott Rowland, and uh, his rookie card can be found in 19... 95 Bowman and 1995 Bowman's Best. And uh, the great thing about 1995 Bowman is that uh, these are these are sort of bonus packs. And uh, the card that everybody wants a Scott Rowland right now is the foil gold Scott Rowland card. And in the regular Bowman packs, you get one shot. You get one foil card. It's usually silver. You might get a gold one. In these uh, bonus packs, however, you get two foil cards per pack and you have a pretty good chance that uh, one or both of them are going to be gold foils. Uh, the foils are for the prospects which is why the Scott Rowland rookie card is on there. So uh, that that is what we're going to do today. We're going to try to find some rookie cards of those Hall of Famers. Uh, I, I kind of had been wanting to do this when I went through the card closet just the other day. I was I'm not sure if I have any of those and then I found these uh, nice uh, bonus packs from Bowman. I don't think these are I don't think these are jumbo packs. They have 14 cards. Regular packs have just 10. So I'm not really sure what uh, what you know these are called. But uh, I couldn't find any of these online either. I looked for these on eBay to see you know if somebody had posted these and and you know partially to see what the comp was to see what these are going for, but also to see what they were called so I could tell you that. And there weren't any. So I don't know what they're called, and I don't know what they're going for. The regular packs of Bowman are going for about 15 bucks a pack. So I assume these would go for, you know, I don't know, maybe 20 or 25 bucks a pack. I'm not sure, but there aren't any, so who knows? I guess I could put some up and set my own price or something like that. But uh, instead of doing that, which I'm sure some of you would, you know, advise me to do, I'm going to open them here on the channel. We're going to see what we get. Before we do that, I wanted to mention a player from the NFL that I have not mentioned on the channel yet. Uh, a lot of people are talking about Brock Purdy and how, you know, everybody's trying to get his rookie card out of the new Panini football products that are coming out. And I think that that is maybe premature to start buying Brock Purdy singles. There's a lot, you know, that's still going on there. And I think we're going to see a lot more of his rookie cards come out in the new Panini products anyway. So, you know, the player, however, I'm not that interested in Brock Purdy. The player that I'm really interested in, a guy named Ryan Stonehouse, and this is a guy who was a rookie this past season. He plays for the Titans, and he is a punter for them. And I know punters are not usually cards that anybody's all that excited about. And I would love to show you one, but Panini has not made one yet. Ryan Stonehouse was the rookie punter for the Titans. And the reason he's significant is he set a record this season for most punting yards average for the entire season, his, his his net punting yard average for the season was 53.1 yards, which he broke a record that had stood for 82 seasons, which is unbelievable. I, I mean, this is a record that nobody thought would ever get broken. And here he was able to break that record. Amazing, amazing punter. He came on as a, an undrafted free agent to... Uh, to the Titans, and uh, they took a chance on him, and man, he just uh, blew everybody away. His accuracy is really good, and obviously his yardage is is just phenomenal. And uh, I can't show you a Ryan Stonehouse card. I wish I could, and I'm, I'm really looking forward to when those cards come out. I know punters are not usually cards people get excited about, but I, I think it's an amazing accomplishment, and I'm kind of amazed that Stonehouse wasn't really considered as a Rookie of the Year candidate for Offensive Rookie of the Year. I mean, the guy... I know he didn't score points, but boy, he sure did put on quite a performance this season. So I can't show you his cards, but I can show you one card of the guy whose record he broke. He broke Sammy Baugh's record. Sammy Baugh was an amazing player for the Redskins back in the 30s, 40s, and 50s. And uh, this is a 1951 Bowman Sammy Baugh. I'll get that in focus for you. It's the only Sammy Baugh card I have, but uh, I'll cut myself some slack on that as there are not many Sammy Ball playing era cards. There are only about five of them total, five different Sammy Ball playing era cards. This is one of them, like I said, 1951 Bowman. His rookie cards is 1948 Leaf, and uh, the 1949 Leaf is essentially the same card, just has a different copyright date, the picture and everything else the same on it. And then the 50 Bowman, the 51, which is this one, and the 52, and that's it. 
There are, really are no other playing era Sammy Baugh cards. Even though he came into the league in 1937, he didn't get a football card until 1948 because they just really weren't making football cards during that period. Um, very uh, kind of sort of blank period as far as football card collectibles in there. And uh, if they were making them, you can bet Sammy Baugh would have gotten one. He was probably, I think a lot of people consider him the greatest player of his era. Um, now, he, you see him here as a quarterback, and he is known certainly as a quarterback. He was an amazing quarterback. He, I think, he led the league in. Uh, he led the league. I'm trying to remember. I think it was completion percentage like eight times, which he. I think is, if it's not still a record. It's in the top three or four. As that is just a remarkable statistic. Uh, he, he just was an amazing quarterback. He was also an amazing punter, and. He was also an amazing safety. He played defensive back, too. He played both sides, and he punted. That's what players did back then, but none of them did it better than Sammy Ball. He was absolutely amazing. He was one of the charter members of the Hall of Fame, one of the first players elected in the first Hall of Fame class of 1963, and he went in with guys like George Hallis and Red Grange and Jim Thorpe and Curly Lamb. I mean, all the, the greats, just the giants of football, and Sammy Ball was in that initial Hall of Fame class, and very deservedly so. Um, his his statistics are just absolutely <laughs> ridiculous. I mean, it's just uh, absurd. You start looking into this guy and what he could do. Uh, in 1943, he had what many consider the greatest single season any football player has ever had, and I'll tell you why that was. He led the league in yardage, in passing yardage. He also led the league in punting and in interceptions. Passing, punting, and interceptions. Sammy Ball led the league in all three of those categories in 1943. I'm pretty sure that no one will ever do that again. That was the kind of player Sammy Ball was. I mean, he was just good at all of the positions. Uh, one of the reasons that he was such a good punter is he had mastered what they used to call the quick kick, which is where the quarterback would go up to the line of scrimmage. It was fourth down. They were thinking maybe they'd go for it, but he gets up there and he decides they weren't likely to get it. So instead of passing the ball or handing it off, he would step back and he would do this move that was a quick kick and catch the defense off guard and just bury them, you know, 60, 70 yards back there because there was nobody back to receive the ball and it would just bounce and roll. And, you know, he, he was able to get some amazing punts because of that. Uh, and, and, you know, that's why nobody ever thought that his record would be broken. I mean, he had uh, 51.4 was his uh, average yardage that season, and I believe that was 1940 that he kicked that, and then Stonehouse did 53.1 this past season. It's an amazing accomplishment. It really is. I know people, punters, you know, people look at punters and they're like, ah, it's, what, what's the big deal? But really was, and Sammy Ball is an absolute all-time great. He's been just, uh, you know, kind of forgotten, I think, by a lot of the present generation of football fans and players, but he's a guy that you should really know about. He was on the NFL's 75th anniversary all-time team, and he was on the 100th anniversary all-time team. He he is an absolute legend player and somebody that uh, should certainly get more attention these days uh, than he does. There was, there was really no other player like him quite... Uh, as accomplished as he was at playing all three parts of the game like that. So uh, anyway, that's whose record Ryan Stonehouse broke, and that's kind of why I'm interested in Stonehouse cards when they do eventually come out. Uh, hopefully Panini will make them. I mean, I know they're averse to punters, but... Uh, all right, let's see what we get out of our rip today after all that long rambling by a card wolf about some football history that nobody cares about. 1995 Bowman, again, we're going to get two foil cards out of here. We're looking for Scott Rowland. Start with one of these, and then we'll try the 86 Donruss and see if we can get a Fred McGriff rookie. And again, I, I could not find these online, so I don't know what these are going for, and I'm not even sure of the proper name of these. Uh, I, I consider them sort of bonus packs or something like that. They're hard to get into, I can tell you that. Man, that was a real struggle to open that thing up. All right, so we start off with Peter Monroe. You can see these 1995 Bowman cards. Very pretty cards. I always like these cards a lot. Some great player portraits on here. Peter Monroe from the Red Sox. And then we got Glenn Dishman and uh, Bill Smith. Looks like our foil cards are here right in the middle. And we got uh, Bill Simmis and who is this? This is uh, Gerald 
Wittisich Jr. I don't remember him. I got to be honest with you. All right, so we get to our our silver foils. We got Latroy Hawkins and Bill Polcipher, who I also don't remember. Man, some of these guys are players I I honestly have never heard of, and I know this era pretty well. John Lieber and Jeff Granger, and then uh, Russ Davis, and flip over to get uh, Rich. Becker and Andy Bennis, who is uh, probably the player that uh, is most well-known to people out of that entire pack, would be Andy Bennis. So, of course, Bowman back then, uh, these 1995 cards, mostly they were focused on prospects and rookies. And you can even see on the front of the pack, it says home of the rookie card. And that was what uh, Topps was doing with Bowman back then, really focusing on putting new drafts, new guys who had come up into the league and getting them their first card in Bowman. And that was certainly true for Scott Rowland. I think you can also get, I think Andrew Jones has also got a rookie in here if I'm remembering correctly, but Scott Rowland's the one we want. So let's open this 1986 pack of Donruss. Um, one of the cool things about the Fred McGriff rookie is he only has two, and one is the 86 Donruss, the other is the 86 Leaf, which is the same card as the Donruss card, just has the Leaf logo instead of the Donruss logo at the top. And those are it as far as the Fred McGriff rookie. If you're trying to get his rookie, you don't have to search around and, you know, weed through, you know, 50, 60 different kinds of variations on his rookie. There was only that, you know, the Donruss and the Leaf, and they both look pretty much the same. So hopefully we will pull one out of here. I'm I'm really uh, not sure what our odds are. I don't remember how many cards are in this set, but uh, hopefully we can get one. Greg Harris starts us off. Pitcher for the Rangers there. Get that in focus for you. We got Mike Flanagan, good pitcher for the Orioles for many years throughout the late 70s and 80s. Jeff Reardon from the Expos, Rafael Santana, good shortstop for the Mets, and Bob Walk. And we got Dan Quisenberry, Hall of Fame relief pitcher there, Len Barker, and uh, Tony Bernizard, good utility guy, second baseman there for Cleveland. Mark Funderburk, DH for the Twins, and Carney Lansford had a long career in the league, played for the Red Sox and the A's, and I think he played for the Angels as well. Tim Tuffle, second baseman for the Twins, Bob Forsh, and uh, Juan Nieves, rookie card there, not the rookie we're looking for, Juan Nieves, Gary Ward, and our last card is Ozzy Guillen, good shortstop there. So no McGriff rookie, and we still have a shot at the uh, Scott Rowland foil rookie here, silver or gold, I would be happy with either one. Uh, and we'll get into this last pack of uh, Bowman 1995. Again, I'm not sure if this is a uh, a jumbo pack or a bonus pack. I couldn't find this listed anywhere, so I'm not sure what these 14-card packs are. And uh, it looks like, oddly enough, it looks like we did get a Fred McGriff card out of this, but that's about 10 years later than his rookie card. These are 1995, but there is Crime Dog on the back. So we will get a Fred McGriff card today, just not the one we wanted. All right, let's start this off. We got, uh, it's hard to see these. Craig uh, Matson is who starts us off there. And this, this pack is a little bit sticky, oddly enough. The other one was not at all. We got uh, Brian Stevenson, pitcher for the Cubs, and Torrey Hunter, a good player there for the Twins. There was a movement on a little while ago that Torrey Hunter should be considered for the Hall, and I don't know about that, but he was a good player. Brian Barber, who looks... Pretty, <laughs> pretty sure of himself there with uh, his uh, pitching. Tony Terry, who I do not remember. Here are our foil cards. Hoping for the Scott Rowland. We start with Jim Brower. What is our second silver foil? Is it the Rowland? No, it is a Royal. Sal Fasano is our other foil card out of there. So no luck getting the Scott Rowland rookie, unfortunately. William Van Lanningham greets us after that. And Moises Alou, good player there. Of course, you guys will remember him. Moises Alou. And uh, then Travis Fryman, good player there for Detroit. Shout out to Lisa Z and Cole of Cole's Comic Claims. John Vetland from uh, the Yankees, good pitcher. And we finish off, of course, with Fred McGriff. So we did get a McGriff, just not the one we wanted. But uh, and even I thought that would be fun to see if we get those new Hall of Famers and find their rookie cards. We did not, but, uh, you know, I'll have to see. I, I think... I think I have some other 86 Tenris. What I don't have are 86 Leaf Packs. I could not find any of those in the Card Closet collection, but um, maybe see if I can scrounge some of those up elsewhere. The 86 Leaf McGriff rookie is far rarer than the uh, Donruss rookie. They just printed fewer Leaf cards as, uh, you know, it was the custom of uh, most of the companies back then. Fewer OPC cards, fewer Leaf cards, just because the uh, collecting audience in Canada was a lot smaller than the one in the U.S., and they hadn't split off 
Leaf as its own, you know, brand for, for both countries at that point. They eventually did that and just, you know, do it in a different way. They still do that today, I believe. So there you go. Hope you enjoyed that. Walk down football history there and then uh, ripping into some of these packs, hoping to find something really good. But, uh, you know, no luck today, but we'll certainly have better luck another time if we can get into some more of these. Hope you guys are doing well, having a good week. I'll be back tomorrow on the program with a rip called Pack Battle. That's right. We do a Pack Battle Rip with Average Show every Wednesday. And we've got one scheduled to, for tomorrow. Should be a pretty good one. I think you guys will enjoy it. And uh, I will see you back here then. In the meantime, as always, happy collecting.